Hi guys, and thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Joyce and I talk about immigration. Thank you guys. Those of you who have not subscribed, please remember to subscribe. Any information that I share here is not legal advice. In case you need a lawyer or an immigration consultant, kindly watch my video where I have given you a list of all the consultants in Canada. So this video is just for educational purposes because I've seen a lot of questions on the comments, people asking me, Joyce, uh, how can I come to work in Canada without a work permit? Others, do I need a work permit uh, without a job offer? Others are asking, how come we are not getting jobs when we are, we are outside Canada? So I'm going to be answer. I'm going to be answering all these questions in this video. So stay tuned to the end and you're going to learn a lot. So uh, today we'll be discussing this giant called LMIA. It's L-M-I-A. So uh, there are a few things that you need to learn about LMIA. Those of you who don't know what is LMIA, is Labor Market Impact Assessment. Uh, and... Uh, there are a few things that you may need to learn. An LMA is a certificate that is given to the employers in Canada to allow them or to enable them to uh, recruit foreign workers. So they have to meet a few requirements before they can uh, apply for this LMA. They have to prove to the government that for this position that they, are, they want to employ this foreign worker, they have not managed to find a local employee or there's nobody around them who is willing to take up this position so that's why they are extending the employment or the job offer to a foreign worker so now there are two main things here that you may need to understand for you to understand what you are talking about so um now there are some employers or there are some Employers that don't require LMIA for them to recruit, or rather, there are some employees that do not require to apply for a job that has LMIA. So you can get, you can actually get exempted, or rather, an employer can get exempted from applying for, for LMIA so that you can come to Canada without LMIA. And that class is the one that we call International Mobility Program. Most of you have heard me. I have done several videos on that before. But on this video, we'll be talking about LMIA and International Mobility Program. So there are two classes here. You can either come to Canada to work under LMIA, meaning that your employer has to have a certificate for them to recruit you. And this other one means that you can still come to Canada with International Mobility Program, whereby your employer does not require LMIA to recruit you. Okay, now, um, okay, the purpose of these things that we are talking about is to allow the employer to recruit temporary foreign workers under temporary foreign worker program. This program enables employers in Canada to hire foreign workers where there are no suitable workers in Canada to do the job. Okay. And the purpose of International Mobility Program is to promote Canada's broad economic, social, and cultural interests. Since the International Mobility Program policy goals are broader, the Canadian government does not use LMI process on foreign nationals who fall under the International Mobility Program. So, so they work opposite, direct opposite each other. Okay, some of the most common LMI exempt streams under the International Mobility Program are three main ones. The first one is significant benefit. If you fall under significant benefit career, if your career is under significant benefit, I'm going to be telling you what are these careers. You do not need an LMIA. The other one is that if your career fall under reciprocal employment, you do not need an LMIA. If your career fall under charitable and religious workers, you do not need an LMIA. I'll be telling you a few things here and there 
just to hint to you how some people come to Canada and find jobs without LMA, how you can even be recruited from outside Canada without an LMA, so that if you fall under these categories, you can actually come to Canada without stress. The first one is significant benefit. So apart from the situations, okay, I'll be reading a few things here and then I'll be explaining, okay? So they're saying here that Canadian visa officers have a degree of flexibility in assessing whether the insurance of a work permit to a foreign national is desirable without the need of an LMA. This is known as significant social or cultural benefit. So this means that if the, if the visa officer looks at an application from an employer and they find that this employer is genuine, the, the career or the, the LMA exempt that they have, they have submitted really deserves to be guaranteed, then they have to look at these few things so that they can qualify it to fall under significant benefit. That way, they can bring or they can recruit people without having to apply for LMA. You guys know the consequences and the process of ap applying for LMA is not anything funny. Every employer in Canada would want to be exempted from this LMA because, it's, first of all, it's very expensive and the, and the expenses goes to the employer. So very few employers want to take that route. The other thing is that it's tedious, it's a long process, so it's not very easy. And they have made it like that intentionally so that people don't just hire. You know, Canada is not a place where you can just start applying jobs from home and expect to come the, the next week. I, I normally tell you guys that Canada is very far. So that's why they have made uh, it so hard through this LMA that an employer has to prove to the government that they really need to bring somebody from outside Canada. So for you to fall under significant benefit, one of them, if you, if you are an official academic, if you have an official academic record showing that the foreign national has a degree, diploma, certificate, or similar award from a college, university, school, or other institutions of learning relating to the area of the their ability. You have to prove that. The other thing is that evidence from current or former employers show that showing that the foreign national has significant full-time experience in the occupation for which he or she is sought. This one is significant in this context can be taken to mean 10 or more years experience. So somebody who has 10 or more experience in terms of uh, years means that this person is really significant. They are needed. The other reason is that they have, uh, that uh, it has been the recipient of national or international awards or patent. This one means that if this, um, if this person that you want to bring to Canada without LMIA has had a history of national or international, you know, impact. Like this person has had an award that, oh, this one was, like the way we know from Kenya, we know people like Lupita Nyong'o, other people that have received international awards. Those people can come to Canada and work without LMA because they're significant. The country, I mean, Canada needs them because, you know, nobody, everybody wants to be associated with people that have received awards and people that are performing Ex, uh, exceptionally well. The other reason could be evidence of membership in organizations requiring excellence in its members. Okay. So if you are a member in, of such an organization that is requiring excellence of its members, you also qualify. Having been the judge of the work of others, having been the judge of the work of others, it's as simple as that. Then evidence of recognition for achievements and significant contributions to the field of peers, government organizations, or professional or business associations. So you, you are a person that has a huge impact. The other one is evidence of scientific or scholarly contributions to the field by the foreign national. 
somebody who has masters, you have a PhD, you have studied to the last level of education. Yeah? You have that evidence of scientific or scholarly contributions. And you're going to bring all that to Canada. They're even going to give you citizenship for that. So publications authored by the foreign national in academic or industry publications and or leading role of the foreign national in an organization with a distinguished reputation. You know, all these awards, like the awards given by the UN, this big, big, big organization, if you have ever received such a big recognition, I can assure you for, for sure, if you find a good lawyer who understands what we are talking about, they can actually apply for you to come to, to work in Canada without LMI. Coming to work to Canada or coming to work in Canada without LMI does not mean that you'll come to Canada without work permit. Just remember that. LMI is not work permit. So LMI, is, it means that you, you know what you mean. Eh? We have just explained. So you, have, you must have a work permit besides coming, besides getting exempted from LMIA. You still need the work permit. Otherwise, how are you going to board the this flight, this uh what are they, these aircraft aircraft? How are you going to, to come to Canada? You, you know, you always have to think, guys, about immigration. Anything that you think about coming to Canada, you always have to have how are you going to come? How how are you going to land at the airport? Who's going to receive you? What are you going to prove that for sure you got like a visa? So finally, you still need the work permit outside Canada or a work permit you can apply from within Canada or from outside Canada. The other class is for entrepreneurs, self-employed persons. Oh, these ones are so needed. Let me tell you guys, this country of Canada, it needs people that, that knows what they are doing. Because I've noticed that, hmm, I don't want to say about it, but guys, they are, they are here, what I have learned is that if you are a professional, even applying for simple, simple things here, when others are struggling, if you are a professional, you find that your application is highly considered. Yeah, it's true. So it's, if you are a professional, you will always be considered because this country needs people who are qualified and who are going to come and make a change. So the other one is entrepreneurs, self-employed persons. So an LMA exemption may be granted to private entrepreneurs who wish to come to Canada temporarily in order to start or operate a business those of you who have money and you need to come and start a business here you can actually get exempted from lmi applicants to one of these programs must be the sole or majority owners of the business they wish to pursue in canada they will also have to demonstrate that their business will be of significant benefit to canada entrepreneurs are only eligible for lmi exempt work permits if they can demonstrate that their work in Canada is temporary in nature. Mm. This category is particularly well suited to owners of seasonal businesses. Like if you can come to Canada during summer and maybe do farming, come and lease a huge chunk of land and then do farming seasonal business, you qualify for this exempt LMI, exempt ca category. So entrepreneurs who have already applied for Canadian permanent resident may also qualify for LMI exam, exempt sorry, work permits in this category. So LM, entrepreneurs are only eligible for LMI exempt work permits if they can demonstrate that their work in Canada is temporarily in nature. This one is about entrepreneur. So the other one category is intra-company transferees. So intra-company uh, transferees may be granted an LMI exempt for a temporary transfer to Canada. Transferees must be considered executives, managers, or special, specialized uh, knowledge workers and must work for a foreign company with a qualifying relationship to the company in Canada. That one is self-explanatory. So dependence of foreign workers. Spouses and children of foreign workers holding a Canadian work permit for a skilled position do not require LMI. Please note that this does not apply to spouses of workers on an international exchange program. This one means that, for example, the nurses who are coming to Canada with work permit, 
your spouses do not need LMA, so they just they can just apply for for work permit and they do not need LMA. The other category is French speaking skilled workers. So foreign nationals who have been recruited through a francophone immigration promotional event uh, uh, coordinated between the federal government and francophone minority communities and who are destined for a province of or territory outside of Quebec and qualified under NOC classifications O, A, and B may be eligible to work in Canada through mobility francophone. Remember, I did this video. Guys, those of you who, who can speak French, Canada really needs you. As long as you prove that you're not going to Quebec, because they don't want you to go to Quebec. If you're coming to Canada, by the way, and you want to apply for work permit, do not, uh, and you speak French, do not think that if you go to Quebec, it's going to work better for you. No, no, no. They don't want to add more French speaking to Quebec, people who are already speaking French, because Quebec is a French speaking community. So they want you to go to Ontario, go to any other province, which is not uh, French speaking. We know that British Columbia, is it British Columbia? No. Uh, New Brunswick is bilingual. I think it's officially bilingual. Is it New Brunswick? Yeah, it should be New Brunswick. It's official. Yeah, it's New, New Brunswick. Is officially bilingual. So do not go to New Brunswick and do not go to Quebec. Hmm? Just go to any other province so that you can go and help those people who are there speak French better. The other one is uh, researchers, guests, lecturers, and visitor, visiting professors. Oh, researchers, lecturers, and visiting professors. That one is self-explanatory. You do not need LMI to come and work in Canada. Those of you who are doing research, can you find something in Canada that you can come and research? Look for something, prove that you have been doing research all your life <laughs> or for some time. Huh? If, you, if you want to come and volunteer to, to, to lecture here in Canada, if you're, if you're coming to visit as a professor, you do not need an LMI to work during that time. Okay, so they, we also have provincial LMA exemptions. That one was federal. The ones that I was reading for you were federal means the entire country, but provincial now is depending on each province. Workers nominated by a province for permanent resident and who have obtained a job offer in that province may be exempted from the need for LMA. This one means that Guys, you know that we have got provinces that do provincial nominee, PNP, provincial nominee program. So this one is whereby a province nominates you. If you do the expression of interest, you get nominated by the province and the process continues. And you're coming to Canada with a permanent resident. So by the, before you get your permanent resident, because sometimes it can take even up to one year or even six months, and the employer needs you immediately. So what normally happens is that you can apply for work permit. And what they're saying here is that this work permit that you will apply, this one applies to the nurses who are coming. This work permit that you apply may not need, uh, may not need what? May not need LMA in some cases, may not need LMA, but in some other cases it may need LMA. But here they're saying that you may not need an LMA because you are waiting for your PR. If you're coming by, if you're coming through PNP or even rural communities nominations. Okay, that one is clear. The other one is um, reciprocal, uh, reciprocal employment. This one allow foreign workers, foreign workers to take up employment in Canada when Canadians have similar. This one is simple. It means that if it's like exchanging, it's like Canada exchange its workers and then maybe to Kenya and then also Kenya, like, like international exchange like that. In that way, if there's an exchange, you do not need an LMA. The other one is international agreements. It's simple as that. Like between international agreements, like we have Canada and the US. They have a, a Northern America 
free trade agreement, NAFTA, is an example of this case, whereby a Canadian or a permanent resident in Canada can go to work in the uh, from the US can come to work in Canada without LMIA. So they do not need LMIA, okay? Because there is this agreement, okay? Then international, yeah, this, this point for um, Northern America free trade agreement is actually NAFTA is between Canada, US, and, New, uh, and Mexico. So this one, I want to highlight this because of the nurses. The nurses, I always encourage you to do uh to do both applications apply for canada and also apply for the us so that you, if you get the two licenses you can always use this nafta you can live in the us and work in canada or you can live in canada and work in the us okay the other one is charitable and religious workers now this one is very interesting and i have seen before i never used to know how this one works but I, lately i have seen so many people that come to Canada as visitors, you know, visitors is, is a temporary visa. So when they come here, they, they talk to lawyers and lawyers can connect them to churches that, uh, that, that require workers. Some of the churches require interpreters. Other churches require people that can come to teach them religion, things about religion that they do not know and they are needed by their communities. Let's say, for example, the Kenyans or Nigerians who live in a certain area and there is an, a Kenyan who has come from Kenya and they have got content in terms of religion that they need to teach these Kenyans. They can approach a lawyer and the lawyer can apply for LMA exempt work permit. And that way they can, that person can get work permit to come in, do this kind of job in the churches. That one is so common here. And other charitable jobs. I didn't read it's a lot of things here, but I'm just giving you briefly because I don't want this video to take so long. It's also the one for religious workers. Um, I think that is it. That is it. Oh my goodness, that video is so long. That is it about LMI exempt. I hope you have understood. If you have not understood, please comment on the comments. I'll be answering your questions where I can. But at least I know now you have uh, at least a clear view. I'm going to do a separate video of the NOC codes to repeat another one because I've already done it and also a separate one about LMI to insist on that so that you can get more tips and more videos will be coming. So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you subscribe. Share this video so that the people who are coming here may know at least how to find their way or even the people who are outside, because LMI is, is a giant here, they may know other pathways that they can come without LMI. God bless you. Bye-bye.